that's seen by some as a superpower standoff by proxy. Names like Bobby Fischer, Boris Spassky, Anatole Karpov and Gary Kasparov evoke those moments when it seems that Uncle Sam was eyeballing the Russian bear over a chessboard. A similar frisson attends this evening's big world championship match in New York. It's between Magnus Carlsen, the great pin-up of chess from Norway, a man who's modelled for G-Star Raw, and Sergei Karyakin of Russia. Now, over the past few weeks, they've played out a series of forgettable draws, but as we speak, it's make or break with a round of nerve-shredding rapid play games following, uh, if necessary. Uh, all the sort of blur of so-called Armageddon decider in this showdown. Well, we're going over now to our chess studio and our own chess black belt, Stephen Smith. <laughs> Well, welcome to our late night chess roundup. I must admit, a lot of the BBC Two spend is going on this at the moment. We've got some cracking action from New York for you this evening. As well as expert analysis. Now, I'm joined here by Malcolm Payne, chess correspondent at The Telegraph, Yvanka Huska, the current British women's champion, and by Shah Jahan, hope I've got that right, who's 10 years old and one of the most successful graduates of my chess correspondence course. Very pleased to have him with us. Now, Yvanka, you are lucky enough to live in Norway. Is there chess fever? What are they saying about their guy? Oh, the Norwegians are really proud of Magnus Smith. He's this chess superstar. He's on all the newspapers, the two TV channels that cover this world event. And uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, in fact, they've moved it to the prime TV channel. And you've actually played him, haven't you? I, I lost, and it was a top match. I just played a, an opening which I studied, which was Ninja Indian Defense. Uh -huh. Is that a tricky one? Is that what you do in that? Yeah, it's a bit dynamic. Okay, good. So, Malcolm, um, how big a deal is this event tonight? Well, it's almost a throwback to the 1970s and 1990s when chess had a geopolitical edge to it. So, in 1972, when the American Bobby Fischer defeated Boris Spassky in Reykjavik, that was the Cold War. That was the embodiment of the Cold War. And there's absolutely dead silence in the hall. Fask is pacing, he's nervous, and wait, here comes Fisher, coming on the stage, saying that he was caught in traffic. And uh, I think Fask is visibly relieved. And also perhaps pained. Subsequently, there was a match between Kasparov and Karpov, many matches when it was almost perestroika against the old communism. And now we can see with uh, Vladimir Putin backing his boy, and in a sense, you know, rekindling some of the, of the ideals of the old uh, USSR, but actually the Russian government have a real interest in, in success in this match. Malcolm Payne recreates a mouth-watering move from match nine in the series, the build-up to a so-called diabolical answer by the Russian, which appeared to involve sacrificing his queen. Yovanka, it's early days, but do you notice anything about tonight's events yet? Black seems to be doing very well. He's expanded. Who's that? Black is Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. So uh, I'm a specialist on his body language. He's very comfortable. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> what do you but, make of his body language? Well, he's very comfortable. When he uh, he grimaces a lot. So uh, when he's uncomfortable, you'll see him gurning away. But uh, here he's very comfortable. He's very in the zone. And if you can see on the black with the black pieces, he has a lot of space on the queen side. What sort of lines of attack would you be thinking about now? I would uh, think about my next move being bishop a6. I could continue with queen b6 and rook b7. Maybe rook f8 and just throw my heavy pieces on the queen side. Oh my god, g5. Unbelievable oh. draw. Beautiful. And we have a draw. Beautiful. Have a draw in the second game <laughs> of the tiebreak in the World Chess Champion. Well, I just hope you can get off to sleep after all that. That'll do. 
Stephen Smith. Well, Grandmaster Susan Paul is a former world, a former world and Olympic champion chess player. She was also the first woman to win Grandmaster of the Year. Very good evening to you. They're apparently on the third game, and there isn't a winner yet. Who, who do you think will will prevail tonight, Susan? Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, Magnus Carlsen has won game three. So finally, after 15 games of fighting it out in New York City, he took the lead. And just on time, so right now, last I checked, uh, they were playing game four. And uh, he had a better position ahead on time. So I think the Norwegian fans should be very optimistic. So Magnus will right. hold on to his title. Okay. How, how long will they have been preparing for this, this championship? Well, I remember from my days when I was competing in the World Championship, it, as soon as we find out who the opponent is, and usually it's about six months or sometimes even more, we dedicate our lives to, to that upcoming match to try to learn everything about the opponent, their strengths, their weaknesses, on and off the chessboard. And uh, it just overtakes pretty much our lives. Yeah, yeah. The, um the thing they say about chess players is that they have to be physically fit. I know that sounds ridiculous, but they, physical fitness does help in it when you're playing the game, is that right? Absolutely, and uh, Magnus Carlsen himself is probably the example yeah, of yeah. that. Uh, I witnessed him play soccer and basketball and uh, tennis, and uh, he's super fit and super competitive and energetic. Doesn't matter which of the sports he does, including chess. And I think it absolutely helps him to grind out, down his opponents in these lengthy games, lengthy matches, where it comes down to better nerves and, and uh, fitness and stamina. One of the things they've been saying about this tournament is that it actually it's been rather dull and stalemated games, draws time after time so far, which is why we got to this slightly accelerated decider this evening. Well, why would you have a... A, a, a tournament where a championship where it ends up being rather rather dull and rather the two players seem to be rather evenly so evenly matched and not even able to sort of win games. Well, there are a number of issues. One is that the two players uh, have somewhat of a similar style, and while us as fans uh, can complain that why they are not playing more interesting chess or taking more chances and risks. As a competitor myself, I, I cannot fault them because they will certainly do what they think is best for them to achieve the desired result as of winning the match. And uh, that's what they have been doing. And uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, was the favorite of the match. Uh, he wasn't in his best form. While Karyakin has outperformed his, his expectations, he's had a great match, and that's why we got where we got right now, and uh, the playoffs are super exciting. And in fact, that is why I've been suggesting uh, perhaps changing the format sometime in the near future to have even more excitement where there would be 24 games in the match instead of the current uh, 12 and then the playoffs in having eight of the classical games where the players would get three points for each win, each point, that eight games of the rapid, what they, what they are playing right now, uh, with 25 minutes only for each player, that they would get two points per game. And then finally they would play uh, eight games of blitz, where they would only have about uh, three minutes or five minutes per game, and they would get one point for that. So with that, they would have to really perform their <laughs> best in different formats. Yeah. I think it would be a lot more exciting okay. for us fans. Susan Polgar, we'll, look at, we'll wait the result, the final result uh, later tonight. Thanks ever so much. And that's almost it for tonight. Stay on BBC Two for no such thing as the news up after us.